Hello everyone. Do you remember the flow you saw in the first video? Yes, the Zilker Tourism Booking. We're going to show you how to recreate that flow in this video. Initially, we have to welcome the users. For that, let's add a text block. Here, we're going to simply enter our message and the block name. Next, let's create some question blocks to ask the users some personal details. First, we're asking for their name using a text question block then an email question block to collect their email address. And finally, a number question block to get their phone numbers. In the number block, let's choose the integer option for number format, as decimal does not apply here for phone numbers. Next, we're gonna list down the service options to the users as buttons. From the button, they can choose what they would like to do. Here, we're going for an image type button. Let's choose single selection type because we need the users to select only one of the options. Let's provide a name for the button and insert an image from the computer. Similarly, we'll create more. And after creating all the buttons, let's enable this create path toggle. This creates a separate path for each button. Now let's check this in the preview. Okay, that's how we want it. Moving on, let's add blocks to the book and adventure path. After the user chooses the option, we're gonna present them the adventures in the form of choice cards. This will be a static card since the options are fixed. Let this be a single selection too. Under the card list, let us enter the title, image subtitle, and description. And with the use of the add card field, let's add the duration of the adventure. Similarly, we've added all the cards. Here, we're not switching on the Create Path toggle, since we need all of the options to follow the same path. Let's see the preview and check how the card has turned out. Next, we're going to ask for the number of travelers. Let us choose the slider question block. Here we'll add the minimum and maximum limits and mention the default value of the slider. Now let's create a fork block based on the number of travelers. Let's give the path a name. If the number of travelers is less than 10, it'll follow one path. And if they're equal to or greater than 10, the flow will follow a different path. In the path created for less than 10 travelers, let's add a date block asking for the date of travel and a question block to fill in any medical conditions. This is going to be optional since people may or may not want to disclose these details. We can enable the skip option that will make this an optional question. After asking all the necessary questions, now using the operations block, we're going to calculate the bill amount. We need to show the users their order summary, so let's use an info card and present the order. This is going to be a dynamic card since the order details change with every user. So let's add the appropriate variables as card details. Now we're creating a text type button to ask for a confirmation from the user. When they select book now option, we have to register their booking in the database. For that, let's use a webhook block and integrate the flow with Zoho Sheet. Post method is used when we're adding data to the database. The API URL, query parameters, and headers to add records are taken from Zoho Sheet API documentation. Zoho Sheet receives posting data in the form of query parameters, and hence we don't need to add a body here. Now let's establish a connection with the Zoho account from the Zoho OneAuth application. After entering a connection name, let's specify the Zoho Sheet access permissions by choosing the scopes right here. Now on refresh, we'll find our connection name here. In response, let's map the API success status code to a variable. 
This will be useful to check if there's any server error. Now the booking is done, let's inform the users with a text block. To make it easier for the user to book another adventure, let's give a jump block here that directs the flow back to adventures block. Now, let's see a preview of the flow we have created till now. Consider that the user wants to send an inquiry regarding the service. So let's collect the user's query using a text question block. Now we have to add this query as a ticket to our Zoho Desk account. This time with the help of webhooks, let's integrate our flow with Zoho Desk. Here the steps to create the webhook are the same as we followed for Zoho Sheet API, except for the body. Desk API requires us to send data as JSON body for a post method. So let's add the JSON with required parameters. We can use our user's query and contact details as variables inside the JSON. In the response field, let's collect the ticket number from API response and store it in a variable. Now a ticket will be created in the desk account where users choose to send an inquiry. Let's display the created ticket's number in a message block to the users for their reference. And let's preview this. Consider we manage bookings in a separate flow and the user selects the option to view their bookings. Then we need to direct them to the flow which manages bookings. Let's take a look at the manage bookings flow. Here we have an email block, a message block, and two webhook blocks. These webhook blocks are connected with Zoho Sheet and they take care of viewing and canceling bookings. Now from our current flow, we need to jump to this message block of the manage bookings flow. As we can see here in the new flow, there's an email block preceding the message block to which we are jumping. So while creating the jump block in our current flow, we need to send the value of that email variable too. Hence, under input variable mapping, let's map our current flow's email variable to the new flow's email variable. This means that the email value which was collected from the user in our flow earlier will be shared with the new flow. Now the manage bookings flow will be executed smoothly. With all the relevant flows created and connected, the next step is to create the GC widget to generate the code snippet. So let's go there and create a widget. The basic details are filled in, and then we move on to the important step of associating the flow we just created. 
Here, we can define the permissions to display GC for all users or just the agents in Zoho Desk. Moving on, we have the option to personalize and edit the messages. In this case, it is the welcome message and the end message. In case we associate two or more flows that will be added as a button in GC, we then have the option to add a relevant message to instruct the user to choose an option. With that, we save this and we can access the code snippet from right here. This code can be added to the web page where you want to publish the guided conversation. And that's about it. I hope this video gave you an idea on how each GC block can be used to suit your business needs. Thanks for watching.